Night. No sign of that fog they promised us. We're lucky for us. My cat might run us into Bantry Bay. <laughs> what? A bit of a puzzle, sir. More signal just received, addressed to the captain. I paid my tailor's bill. What about your booking? It came on an admiralty wavelength, sir, but uh, it's marked Spence Code. We don't have a Spence Code, sir. I've acknowledged. Uh, I could ask for clarification. No, it's all right, Mark. Thank you. I didn't log it yet. No need. Let's go into the chart room. Right, sir. Tell her not to use the Admiralty wavelength, sir. Contact bearing 250, appears stationary, probably a small boat. Roger. You hold on this course, we'll give it plenty of leeway. Nothing else, sir? No, sir. Apart from that, seems we've got the channel to ourselves. Makes a change. You've timed it right, sir. Coffee's up. Change of course. Very good. Is there some obstacle not marked on the chart? Sir? Midships. Midships, sir. Steer two five zero. Steer two five zero. If you look at the radar, sir. If you look at the radar, that's blind. I shall have to log this. Very good. We're closing on that contact. Sir, may I suggest... No, that? number one, you may not. Sir, I am the officer of the watch. You know how slow these small vessels are in getting out of the way. We just come over two points to starboard. Lieutenant us. Commander Maddox, have you assumed command of this ship? No. Sir. Then I'd be obliged if you'd leave the running of her to me. Aye, aye, sir. Full ahead, both engines. Bridge, ops room. You're closing with that contact. Oh, there it is, sir. Our watch will swamp it. You must come round to starboard. Port 30. Port! Port 30, sir. We'll go right through it, sir. Sir, can you hear me? You went right through it. Number one, turn that thing off. 
What? Um, hit off. You gonna want a Corsair? No. You deliberately ran that vessel. That's enough. Navigator, what's the course for Bristol? Reduced to 12 knots. Number one will alter course in six minutes' time. Tell the officer in Bristol. Sir. What could I do? He snapped. He's gone mad. Are you trying to tell me it was an accident? And he offers up no sort of excuse and makes no attempt at a defense? That's right. Well, I'll have to think of something before the court-martial. Court-martial? But surely there'll be an inquiry first. I mean, you... you can't... Can't I? I most certainly can. I've already had the first officer breathing down my neck. Was he drunk? Not as far as we know. Well, how do we know? Well, he made a 90-degree turn at 30 knots and hit the thing dead in the centre. He couldn't have been drunk. It was a superb piece of seamanship. Well, I'm sorry, but it was. Suggesting I put him up for a commendation. <clears throat> well, if there is to be a court-martial, I should like to defend him. Indeed. <laughs> we still won't talk. That'll be a thankless task. Did he have any family problems? The wife is dead, but um, there is a son, I believe. He's about 14. Rich! Oi, Rich! Pete? We thought you were... Yeah, well, I got leave, haven't I? Lucy, we've got a visitor. Pete, it's a tomorrow. Yeah, well, I got an early leave. Where are you going? We're back to the house. Well, if you're him, that must be back Look, then. Rich, listen. Um, it's not quite like that. What's the matter? Well, you were on the same boat. Has something happened? Commander David Wheeler, you are placed under house arrest pending the convening of a court-martial. Arising from the events reported by your First Lieutenant, Lieutenant Commander Maddox, on board Her Majesty's frigate Crescendo at 0335 hours this day, whilst you're in command of that vessel. At the court-martial, we shall lay charges against you and that you did hazard your vessel and behave in a scandalous manner, unbecoming the conduct of an officer. By your leave, sir. Yes, Commander Balance? Under the Naval Discipline Act, I understand that an officer so charged is entitled to have an accused's friend to advise him from the outset. That is correct. With Commander Wheeler's permission, I should like to act as such an accused's friend to assist him. Commander Wheeler has indicated his agreement. Uh, thank you, Escort. You may wait outside. Regretfully, the newspapers have already got hold of this business. Commander Wheeler is a local man. I hope that fact won't be allowed to prejudice his court-martial in any way. As prosecuting officer, I shall see that it doesn't. Commander Wheeler will be confined to the officers' quarters of this establishment until the court convenes. Uh, you will be responsible for him until he is called before it. You were on board the Crescendo. What happened? Don't know. Well, didn't you actually see him ram and sink the ship? I saw it all right, mate. I was up in the bowels. I had a grandstand view, didn't I? Well, did he hazard his ship? I would have made a right little miss out of the other one, I can tell you. He would have cut straight through it. Went, went straight on. Not like the commander at all. Well, at least some good came out of it. What's that? I've got seven days leave, haven't I? You didn't even stop to pick up survivors. The vessel was unmanned. You know, I tell you, it was unmanned. Well, they'll ask you to prove that. Well, I, I can't... Hey, well, I, I just... I just that's know. not good enough. I mean, you're not even making an effort. Do you want me to defend you? Yes. All right. Well, then give me something to go on. was an accident. 
What about Richard? Can you imagine what he's going through at this moment? He's alone in Bridmouth. Well, there's the housekeeper. Yeah, well, she's a Bridmouth woman. So? Her feelings are bound to be running a bit high. It could have been one of their boats that you rammed. Jeff, do something for me. But that's exactly what I... No, no. I shall have to get him out of there. Get him up to my sister-in-law's in Edinburgh. But it could be months. I know, I know, I know. Don't you care? Yes, Jeff, I care. I care a great deal. Parker? Now, young Wheeler, this is Chief Petty Officer Parker. He'll be looking after you from now on. Now, you behave yourself. Do what he tells you. David Fitzroy Wheeler, whilst in command of Her Majesty's ship Crescendo, did willfully cause the said vessel to be hazarded, did behave in a manner unbecoming the character of an officer, did put at peril another vessel whilst on its lawful occasion upon the high seas, did cause that vessel to be struck, run down and presumably lost. There is evidence to show that Commander Wheeler did more than ram and sink an innocent vessel. He did not acquaint his officer of the watch of any explanation of his actions. I shall therefore not hesitate, for the purposes of this court-martial, to show Commander Wheeler in his true colours. We were travelling at maximum speed, and he steered to port. He brought the ship round on a direct collision course. He seemed intent on ramming the vessel, sir. And your ship was in no danger? None whatsoever, sir. And that vessel? We would have passed it wide on our port bow, sir, if... Go on, please, Lieutenant Commander Maddox. If the captain had not ordered the wheel hard over to port, sir. What vessel? No loss has been reported of any ship or boat. It apparently had no name, no owners, no flag, and no port of origin. Was it then a Marie Celeste? A mystery ship? without crew or destination? If it was, then HMS Crescendo sank a phantom. And there is no case to answer. That vessel did exist. Watch officers and other personnel on the bridge at the time saw it and have sworn under oath that it was in fact rammed and sunk deliberately. We have failed to find any reason for Commander Wheeler's action. The answers must lie within his own conscience. But it has been proved beyond any doubt that it happened. And if it happened, then I submit to this court that Commander David Fitzroy Wheeler is a menace to the service and to all who sail upon the high seas and is guilty of every charge brought against him. Well, I know it's a little complicated, but you see, it's not like an ordinary court. I mean, it's, it's naval tradition, really. You see, it's a sword that gives the verdict. If the hilt's pointed towards the accused, then he's innocent. But if the tip's pointing towards him, he's guilty. Commander David Fitzroy Wheeler, this court-martial has found you guilty of willfully hazarding your ship and behaving in a manner unbecoming to an officer of the Royal Navy. Your sentence will be made known to the Lords of the Admiralty and pending their confirmation, you are to be held in custody herewith. Oh, it's a blessing your poor mother's not alive to see all this. It'll break her heart, poor soul. How could he have done such a thing? Nobody really knows what my father did. Well, the court-martial was definite enough. 
People you're about don't like it, you know. It's got nothing to do with them. Now, there's no cause for you to talk like that. Local people are upset, that's all. They think the commander deliberately rammed that little boat and sank it. He wouldn't do a thing like that. Well, it seems he did. You're as bad as the rest around here. Anyway, I don't know as how I'll be able to manage coming here much more. My old Brit's back's been carrying him up again lately. He needs quite a lot of looking after when his back's back. He can't hardly bend, see? Well, he's bending it just now. Here, what do you think? Uncle of... Albert is exercising it right now down at the bowling club. Well, that's different. That's thera... therapeutic. Yes, well. Have you seen this? Yeah, you got a visitor, Rich. I don't want to see anybody. Well, you want to see this one. It's Commander Valance. Who? Your old man's counsel. Hello, Richard. You remember me, don't you? Yes. How are you? All right, thank you, sir. Would you care for a cup of tea, Commander? Uh, no, thank you. I'm all right, Mrs. Edgar. Uh, I was just explaining to the boy that... That's going to leave. Oh, well, now, I didn't really mean to cry It's all like right. That. I can manage. Well, I dare say the Navy will arrange something. I've come to ask you uh, if you'd like to see your father. Yes, please. Good. Well, I've got some transport. We could be in Bristol in an hour. Uh, Richard, I think I ought to warn you. You might find a bit of a change in your father. He's been under a lot of stress. Maybe you could help. You know, loosen him up a bit. Well, have they sentenced him yet? No, not yet. They're holding him, pending sentence. Just a couple of days. And then he's thrown out? Oh, I shouldn't worry too much. He still has friends, you know. Not too many in Bridmouth just now. So, I think it would be best if you went to get as soon as possible. Uh, you're a demon, you can look after you until it's time. But There's no need, start. Dad. I want you away from me. Look what happened. Richard, I don't want to talk about it. Not even with me? No. You've been in the Navy all your life. People make mistakes. Not you. Not that sort of mistake. I thought it fallible. You didn't do it on purpose, then? No. Then it was an accident, and they've no right to hold you here. It's very complicated. I don't want to leave here. I'm all the family you've got. You might need me. No. No? all got to be sorted out. It, 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 it could get very unpleasant. Richard. Your father's right. It's complicated. I don't understand it. Come on. I'll come back and see you again soon. Maybe tomorrow. I don't want to leave Bridmouth, though. And you just call if you need me, all right, Dad? All right, son. He wanted to talk about it, you know. Yes, I know. Well, you could have given him something. There's nothing to give. Do you think he'll go to prison? How do I know? Well, you'd have thought he'd have said something. I mean, you saw how he was. He's all sort of changed. He used to tell me everything. I expect there were a few things he couldn't tell you. I mean, he cut a few secrets from his mates up on the bridge. Well, something happened that wasn't even mentioned at the court-martial. He didn't mention that radio message he got just before, in cold. What radio message? The word went round after that he got this message. Shall I log it, says the operator. Don't bother, says your dad. And then he comes back all white and uptight. No, none of that came out. Well, what did it say, this message? Where is it now? Inside your old man's head. And my mate, who was a friend on the bridge, said there's no such thing as Spence Code. Spence Code? But I know the Spence Code. You what? I know it. Oh, come on, Rich. But I do. All right, then what is it? It's a code that my dad and this other chap made up. Just for a joke. They should send each other messages if they got bored. Let's have a chat. What's his name? Spencer. Where is he? I don't know exactly. He used to be in the Navy, but he got out. 
They still meet sometimes. A place called... What? Oh, um, we used to have a boat shed near there. I'm trying to think what it... The Hereford... The Hereford what? The Gloucester Bargeman. Come on, make up your mind. It was definitely the Gloucester Bargeman in Braxton. How far? Well, when we used to sail up there, it used to take about a day. But by the road, it would take an hour. Hey, you. Me? Yes, you. What? Where are they? Don't ask me. No, that, that's my responsibility. And don't you go too far, my girl. Yes, old master. Get off, please, Richard. But we're going for a ride. Young Richard there isn't going anywhere. Repeat, anywhere. Especially with a person like yourself. Now off the both of you. Come on, off! I have instructions to take you to Edinburgh. Signed by Captain Atfield and can't sign by your father. Now I suggest you go indoors and pack your bag. Are you going to be like this all the time? My responsibility will end when you are on the train to Edinburgh and not before. I suggest you wait inside till the appropriate measures have been taken. And as for you? Yeah, all right. I got the message. See you, Rich. He would take the motorbike. <sighs> and do you reckon we can sail up there, dear? On the Rosie Lee? Where are you both going on the Rosie Lee? Nowhere. I can hit him over the head with a frying pan. Luce, I was thinking of something a little less subtle. But he's standing right by the door and he won't let Rich out. Lucy? Yes. 